as I mentioned, we are standing by for economic data this morning out in about 30 minutes' time. Um, the consumer space is important to look at, and consumers are looking for economic security as people head back to the office amid concerns over COVID cases and inflation. Let's talk about the operating environment right now and allocating capital in it. Joining me right now is Merrill Lynch, Wealth Management President, Andy Sig. Andy, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks very much for being here. Hey, it's great to join you, Maria. Thank you. A lot of cross currents going on in this market. You've got the worries about inflation as we see price hikes uh, in a number of commodities. You've got a great consumer balance sheet where the savings rate has gone up and this effort to normalize. Uh, what can you tell us about the operating environment right now? Uh, I know that Merrill Lynch has been expanding in all of this. Uh, well, thank you. And hey, fundamentally, the U.S. economy is bouncing back very strongly. Um, you know, we saw a lull in the last few weeks with concerns about the Delta virus, but don't let that knock you off the big picture. Consumer spending up 17 percent over 2019, so the consumer is very strong. We're beginning to see people out and about and traveling more, even in the data in the last uh, couple of weeks. So when we think about the quarter, we're expecting to see strong revenues, operating leverage, and strong profits, and that creates a, a, a power Powerful support for the market. So you're not worried about cracks uh, in the system here as we approach the fourth quarter, Andy. Um, you've got a, a good backdrop in terms of the economy, but people are worried that we've seen the peak in growth. Well, I, I think uh, markets day-to-day, uh, week-to-week, of course, uh, you know, they, they move around based on transitory factors. What we need to stay focused on here are medium and longer-term trends. And there, we're very bullish about the direction of the U.S. economy. When we look at investors themselves and sentiment, we don't feel investors are overextended. They're fully invested, but they were guarded. You look at investor reaction to Delta over the last few weeks, and we see that as healthy. Uh, um, there's not uh, irrational exuberance, as uh, famously was said a couple of decades ago. So we still feel like uh, we're in mid-cycle in terms of this bull market. And again, I think that's very constructive. And that's the, that's the uh, point of orientation for investors. What's going to happen over the medium and longer term? Andy, give me your take on the small business community as well as commercial and corporate banking clients. Merrill making the decision to extend 500000 of its paycheck protection loans for small business. Uh, for the commercial and corporate banking clients, you provided nearly a trillion dollars last year in lending commitments and capital raises. How, how are, how's business doing right now? Well, business has been strong, and you know, Bank of America overall has been there in a powerful way for our clients and customers over the last two years. You mentioned that trillion-dollar number. I mean, that just gives you a sense of, of the role Bank of America is playing in terms of helping to drive economic expansion, ensure that workers uh, aren't, aren't uh, impacted by uh, interruptions in business that have come. This has been an important bridge to uh, a post-COVID world. Uh, um, so our business has been strong. And at Merrill Lynch, when we think about our mid-sized and small business, who are many of our uh, clients, uh, we are amazed at what they've done through the pandemic. They've navigated tough times. They've reset their businesses. And they are focused on growth. And again, I think it highlights the dynamism, the entrepreneurial power that is the hallmark of the American economy. Yeah. I mean, Bank of America was so critical in that uh, paycheck protection program, and I know it really did move the needle, specifically talking about Merrill Lynch right now. Andy, give us your sense of asset allocation and how you want to look at one's portfolio in the face of all of these mixed signals. We're waiting on the retail sales number this morning. It is going to be a decline, but it has more to do with these uh, disruptions in the supply chain, I think, than it actually has to do with the uh, growth story. Your take in terms of assets allocation today. Well, uh, our, our business, Bria, just it's about $4 trillion in client assets. Uh, we're invested about 64 percent in equities. As I mentioned at the, at the top, that's, uh, that's fully invested against equities. Um, you know, when we, when we look uh, more deeply, client cash levels are, are pretty high. There's not a lot of, uh, of, um, of, of investor interest in bonds, given the rate environment. Our clients are actually investing more in pooled fixed income uh, vehicles right now, partially driven by this just 
just not a supply uh, of bonds that they have access to. One of the things we are seeing is more client interest in alternative investments, in particular uh, you know, vehicles like private equity funds, uh, down through more uh, venture capital and growth-oriented vehicles. That's a place that uh, we're making a significant expansion in our business. We, our clients today have about $50 billion of alternative investments. That's a number we see tripling uh, over the next four or five years. And so we want to make sure we're there for clients as they, as they add more alternatives to uh, their portfolios. Wow, that is a big number, Andy. That is just terrific. There's also a digital revolution going on in your business, certainly in, in wealth management overall. And I know B of A has been investing in financial technology and digital capabilities for years. B of A, Bank of America, the leader in terms of the financial services sector, in terms of the investment in digital properties. Tell me what that looks like at Merrill Lynch. How will things change on the digital digital front uh, from an investor standpoint. Well, this is this is one of the most powerful elements of a transformation to a modern Merrill. Uh, you think about our business, it's always been a people business, it always will be a people business, but it's now high tech as well as high touch. And Merrill Lynch, as part of Bank of America, benefits from over $3 billion a year of new technology development. So today, 80% of Merrill Lynch clients are interacting with us, not just the old-fashioned way, face-to-face -face and over the phone, but, you know, via online and mobile. It's given our advisors um, enormous leverage in their business. They can be uh, connected to their clients day-to-day, week-to-week, much more easily. Clients love the ability to communicate securely uh, through our secure email. We're all reading stories about uh, client information being compromised and using our, uh, our to communication channels is a very safe way to pass documents back and forth to your advisors. So what we expect to see is the advisor remains at the center of the relationship, but the advisor is powered by technology in a way that uh, we really couldn't have imagined 10 years ago. And that's something that has been propelled forward by the pandemic. We, we are truly four or five years ahead of plan, just given client uptake of technologies. And I haven't even mentioned Zoom and WebEx and, and the way we're communicating with, uh, with video day-to-day uh, -day with clients. We've done almost half a million uh, video conference calls, uh, video calls with clients just so far this year. So it gives you a sense of just how uh, fundamental this is to our business. It also creates so much resiliency for the firm in the face of an unknown <laughs> like the pandemic. I was taken aback uh, by today, this, this uh, stat today, 80% uh, 80 of your wealth management clients are using digital. Um, for for, yeah, for their needs. Yeah. What are those needs? How are they using digital specifically? Well, they, uh, of course, are, they, they're, they check their portfolio, as you, as you would expect. They've done that for many, many years. But what I think is exciting and powerful is digital as a communication channel to advisors, and then digital as a way for us to bring research and the intellectual capital of Merrill Lynch and Bank of America to clients. And so we've got, you know, far more in the way of interactive sessions with our own research analysts and other experts with clients. Um, and again, the Merrill Lynch client base, they are high net worth and ultra high net worth clients. They tend to be a little older than average. The boomers, you know, still are the core of our client base. Uh, so the fact that 80 percent of them are using technology, I think it really speaks to just, uh, uh, again, how deeply uh, this transformation uh, has changed our business. Yeah, I, I love it. And real quick before you go, Andy, are, are your clients now worried about headwinds coming at them? Are they needing to make changes in terms of asset allocation because of new policy like higher taxes and, and, and the spending, perhaps the Federal Reserve taking its foot off of the gas and, and uh, beginning that tapering process. What are they doing and what are your advisors telling them to do in this environment where there are some unknowns on the horizon? Well, you know, clients remain, they're very optimistic, very bullish about their own business. They're guardedly optimistic about markets. I think that's an appropriate uh, posture. Uh, these powerful forces around, around profits, around uh, the U.S. Uh, economic comeback, these are more powerful, we believe, in terms of driving markets uh, than any of the tax policy changes that we're seeing. And, and it's very hard right now to pin down exactly where uh, the, the new tax bill will land. Uh, it's likely to 
to be less impactful um, on our clients than uh, some of the early proposals. We're watching that, but we don't see anything there that will fundamentally change the picture. And we got to, again, step back. The accommodation, uh, whether that is you know, strong fiscal policy or monetary accommodation, this is in place and it is going to be in place for quite a, a while to come. The Fed has talked about not raising rates until 2023. Uh, so again, if you, if you watch these medium and long-term uh, signposts, I, I think they speak to continued rising markets. All right. We will leave it there. Andy, it's great to talk with you this morning. I love the phrase modern Merrill. We used to say mother Merrill. Now we're saying modern Merrill. It's great to see you this morning, Andy. Thank you. We will catch up soon. Thank you. Andy Sig joining us from Merrill Lynch.